Hello everyone, welcome to Hasad and Makar Wish channel. During a previous video I explained how the AC orifice tube works. In today's video I'm going to explain how the AC expansion valve works. We're going to focus on the thermostatic expansion valve which is normally used on the automotive AC systems. It's usually referred as a TXV, TEV or TX. So I'm going to get this camera up close so you can see this better. Let's get started. So now that we have this camera up close you can see that there are two different designs. These are the most common. And remember, this is the uh, thermostatic expansion valve, because there are other kinds. But as I mentioned on the introduction of the video, the thermostatic expansion valve is the most used on the automotive air conditioning system. So you have the angle type, and you have the block type. Different vehicles are going to have different designs, but they operate the same. If we look at this design, the refrigerant is going to enter through the liquid line, which is the line that comes from the condenser as it enters the evaporator and your blower is going to force air through it so the hot air can be absorbed by the refrigerant and be transferred to the outside of the vehicle through the AC condenser so the refrigerant is going to exit through the suction line right here there's going to be a sensing bulb that is going to be fastened to it usually with metal clips this sensing bulb as its name implies senses the temperature of the line which of course is going to be the temperature of the refrigerant because they're directly related and this change in temperature is going to be the one that is going to regulate the opening of the valve that's inside the block type has the same principle except that the sensing bulb is attached to the top so it's not separate like the angle type but it operates the same way the liquid line is going to be at the bottom that's where the refrigerant is going to come in which is a high pressure liquid and near the sensing bulb is going to be the suction line and this is where the refrigerant is going to exit the TXV this drawing right here is a little more clear of what happens inside the valve but what I'm going to do before I aim at this drawing right here I'm going to read for you this section right here and I'm also going to aim the camera in case you just want to read it yourself so I wrote down how it operates you can either follow along or read it on your own it's up to you so the flow refrigerant is controlled by the valve inside the TXB TV, TX is known by all of those names but we already know it's the thermostatic expansion valve the sensing valve which as I showed you earlier is mounted either on top of the expansion valve or it is attached to the suction line is going to react to the temperature changes at the outlet line of the evaporator which is the suction line when the temperature increases with the AC demand meaning when you turn the AC blower on and starts absorbing the heat from the vehicle the temperature inside the bulb will increase this will cause it to push against the spring through the activating pin that's inside to open the valve and obviously as the valve opens there's going to be more refrigerant flowing through just like when you open a faucet same thing as the temperature drops the pressure in the valve is going to drop and the spring is going to push the ball against the seat and that's going to close the valve so this is a thermomechanical function that's happening another note that I made right here is this is an ongoing cycle and there will be times that the valve will be partially open and it won't be either closed or open now we're gonna go to the drone that I've made or an up close of how this happens okay so here's a closer view of what happens in here which like I said this is the inlet the high pressure liquid line and this is a close view of what's happening in here so this is going to be this side this is going to be the back side where it's going to enter the evaporator okay so inlet and outlet inlet outlet on the other side the sensing bulb right here when it gets hot is going to push the activating pin and it's going to overcome the spring pressure here's the ball that this activating pin is connected to so as the pin pushes the ball down the refrigerant is going to be able to flow okay so just like I said earlier there could be times that it's not going to be completely closed or completely open it may be somewhere in the middle and you'll have some kind of flow of refrigerant 
So as the AC demand decreases inside your car, let's say the weather starts getting cooler or you turn the fan too low and the sensing bulb gets colder, then the spring pressure is going to overcome it and it's going to push this ball upwards. And depending on the temperature, it may just close it all the way. And at that point, there will be no refrigerant flowing through. And same applies when the temperature is super hot. Let's say it's 120 degrees outside. You got the AC blowing on high, but it's still hot. Or maybe you just got in your vehicle and it's obviously super hot in there. Well, there's going to be a lot of heat that's going to be sensed by the sensing bulb. So this is going to push this needle as far down as possible and it's going to overcome the entire spring pressure and you're going to have maximum flow of refrigerant which of course is going to be predetermined by the size of the orifice of the expansion valve itself which is going to vary by application. You don't want to modify this. Each one has been designed for each vehicle depending on the AC system that it has the capacity of the AC system and the size of the vehicle itself. So there's no need to change the size. By having this up close drawing you can have a better understanding of what's happening in here and how this flow is constant and this valve is being opened and closed constantly as the temperature changes and is sensed by the sensing bulb. The reason why I drew a close up look on the block type is because this valve is more common now than the angle type. That's why I chose to make a close-up look of this one since I have a very limited space. If I had more space I would have drawn an up-close look on both. And there you go. Now you know how the AC expansion valve works. Stay tuned for future videos because I'm going to continue explaining the remaining components of the air conditioning system. Thanks for watching. See you next time.